The success recorded recently by Airpiece didn't come lightly. There were a lot of challenges. Mr. Allen Oyema is here to tell it all. The challenges weren't just international. There were enemies within who tried to stop him. For years, he tried to attain this height, but it was not forthcoming. Take a look at this clip. So the game is both from within and without. We were stopped. I, I would never stop saying it. So we continue this kind of mouse game with the NCAA. Uh, first of all, you suffer what I call both internal and external conspiracies. It took us seven years. We got des the designation, I think about six, six and a half years ago, to go into London. The CEO of Epis has come out to expose some of the challenges that he never imagined he was going to go through. But today, he's saying all thanks to God that he was able to overcome all of them. Nigerians, you have to take your time and listen to the story of Alan Uyema. Honestly, it is pathetic. It is so emotional to see that, honestly, sometimes even your own enemies will come from your very closest. I mean, your own people. But he is not holding to that. He said he is committed in giving Nigeria a brand new name out there. And that is why he's encouraging Nigerians to patronize his airline. Nigerians, you need to listen to the challenges of Mr. Allen Uyema in attending the height that he has attended today. Uh, Mr. Uyema, congratulations. I mean, we've seen uh, the stories, positive side. I mean, everybody is celebrating. The cost of tickets has gone down. Uh, selling your own tickets in Naira, like the other people, who are selling their own in uh, foreign exchange because they have to be part of the uh, uh, funds. And then, of course, uh, we're told Nigerian food will be served, you know, on the flight. So <laughs> different people have different reasons to be excited. But, I mean, it, the road to this moment, I don't think was just smooth like that, the way everybody is jubilating. We must have faced some challenges before we got to those point, this point. Will you take us through some of those challenges? And then secondly, the last time, a Nigerian airline took that route, flew that route, it was seven years ago. That was Medview. And there were issues with Medview. Have you done a review of those circumstances that led to the failure of Medview? So challenges and a review and lessons learned from the past experience of Medview so that this can be a sustainable operation. Thank you very much. Happy Easter, gents Happy and Easter. lady. Happy Easter. Um, the truth is, uh, if I dwell so much on the, I, I, I want, I would like to look forward, because uh, if we start discussing all the challenges that faced us, uh, that faced us towards uh, achieving this London route, honestly, you feel like crying, you feel like weeping. First of all, you suffer what I call both internal and external conspiracies. It took us seven years. We got des the designation, I think, about six, years, six and a half years ago, to go into London. Since then, it has been cat and mouse game. We actually procured our three triple sevens because of this route, not for any other route. Because I wanted to give it um, the blow that it, it deserved as at that time. However, we were not allowed to go. It's not just whether you like it or not, there's what we call international aeropolitics, which is very dirty. <clears throat> we applied to get, uh, you know, for the TCO. TCO means take country operators permit. You must get that. <coughs> Excuse me. You must get that one before you start going into any European country, UK inclusive. And um, the, the TCO organization from Europe wrote our Nigerian Civilization Authority. Uh, do you know APs? Do you know about the designation and we were denied? My own country denied us. So they threw it back. We went back to the NCA. They said, oh, we didn't tell you. We didn't tell them. Who designated us? The Minister of Aviation. The Federal Minister of Aviation. Whose duty it was and it still is to do that? Well, we said, okay, we are ready. They refused. They said, until they allow us to apply. So, you got designation from the federal government, 
And the NCA, I don't have the same for argument, you are still over, but uh, you should not uh, make any application to us going into the UK. Meanwhile, you gave us the nod to go to China, go to India. China is 14 hours, about 13 hours going to Guangzhou and 14 hours coming back. India is about 12 now because of the closure of um, uh, the Sudanese airspace. About 12 going, about 13 coming back. Yet, we didn't find this airline worthy to go into the UK. Six hours. Piece of cake. For an airline that is doing over 160 hours of flying daily in this country, no other airline in the entire West and Central Africa does that much. 160 hours of flying, unblemished, no issues. What is six hours? Yet they stopped us. So the game is both from within and without. We we are stopped. I, I would never stop saying it. So we continue this cat and mouse game with the NCA uh, and, um, Captain Musa Nuhu. During his time said, enough is not enough. The peace must be allowed to go in. What is the issue? Remember, they told us to... Uh, okay, when the heat became so much, when I gave them a lot of heat, they said, okay, you need to prove to us that you'll be able to pass the TCO. For goodness sake, if I don't pass the TCO, it doesn't mean anything. Then I, I leave. But I'm army to go. They said, no, we must prove to them that we'll be able to pass the TCO. I said, okay, you come and audit us based on the TCO standards. They said, no, you have to get IATA. Some consultancy friends from IATA. To do that, IATA must conduct that and give their results. We paid, I'm sure it cost us over 200 million. We bought IATA. IATA conducted a, a TCO audit on Airpiece Dump. Remember, we are IOSA certified. So I don't know why the need for that. We passed. It took several months before IATA even came. We passed. Then they wrote to NCAA that it should allow them to proceed to go and do the audit with the, with the TCO of Europe. And they didn't respond. Several months passed, going up to a year. We went back to them and told them that, look, it is better you come out and say why the reason for all this. Oh, I go to the press and say it. And I will draw. Remind you, this country is being fleeced by all the airlines going to London from this place. People were paying five times more than they should have been paying. All sorts of reasons were being given to this. And you say you don't have capacity. You have three triple sevens. What several hundreds of millions of dollars lying out there, fully purchased by this airline? I was when I said, okay, 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 okay. We are now going to audit you ourselves. <laughs> Not minding the result of the I had the people they recommended. At first I didn't want to acquiesce to that. Uh, uh, my Chief Operating Officer, Mrs. Tony Olajide, said, Oga, please, please follow them. So I agreed. They came and audited. No, nothing, of course. I found nothing. It was at that point, Musa Nuhu said, enough is enough. Epis must be allowed to access the London market and um, cancel whatever the other people put in place and allowed us to go. Now, the British people came with their TCO audit. They didn't spend 48 hours with Epis. It's one of the most stringent audits you can think of. When you said, what have we learned? The difference between us and some Nigerian airlines that went there in the past was that they didn't have that TCO audit. You didn't have... Though, that was not enough to have made them to go down. And their going down was not because they were no good. I will tell you, even in the last one week, what we've seen, what we have seen, if we are not... If God is not with us, we would have said, okay, let's go. Let's close it. Before I start losing money, the pattern center. Those Nigerian airlines... We are dealt with under the dirty international aeropolitics, and they suffered for it. So I knew all this, and I said, I must go bona fide into the UK. I must get it as of right. When you get the TCO, you should pass it, and you get your F FCO, that your permit now to operate. That is the best. But do you know when we applied? 
The UK people told us, uh, you know, this uh, TCO is too, you may not be able to pass it like the other Nigerian airlines, you may not be able to get it. Um, why not look for partnership or get wait lists from a UK carrier or UK carrier? Once you fall to that trap of depending on wait lists alone for your operations, they will deal with you. They could use those people, they wake up one morning and tell you that, you know what, oh, for one reason or the other, we cannot continue. Yeah. And your operations are destabilized. Yeah. And they treat you so condescendingly. But APIS went in there very strong. We passed the TCO audit. There was nothing they could do. In fact, there was a day they wrote us some something that would take about that nine pages, expecting us to take about two or three months to complete it. We completed it in two hours because these were processes we are used to. I keep on telling Nigerians, the safety protocol in APIS is second to none in the world. It's unfortunate that we don't believe in our own. Those triple sevens you're seeing are being maintained by the world's most, most expensive and the best MRO. The it is Israeli aerospace industries. I pay that much because I want safety. Our safety department, our engineering departments, maintenance departments are top notch. If I'm lying, let NCS say so. After all, I came to Nigeria. Who did they audit? It was APIS. If we had failed, Nigeria would have failed. So, Nigerians should start believing in their own. This penchant for slave mentality and colonial mentality, colonial mentality believing them. We cannot get it right. It's a lie. All right, let me come in here because, you know, thank you for taking us down, even though you didn't want to revisit the past. Just, But I think it was quite important for this conversation to share with us the journey to get into where you are so people can appreciate even more, you know, this um, the fact that we're celebrating the first, at least on Saturday, um, the first um, airpiece flight to, to London Gatwick. Now, since Saturday, you've had 48 hours operation. I would assume or imagine that even in this 48 hours, it might seem like maybe 48 months, in terms of what you've experienced. And, and just touching on where you left off as to how well have Nigerians embraced this, um, you know, EPIs going to London. And, and we see the impact already, some foreign airlines, even though there are many reasons given for the drop in airfares. But I, I think we've gone to see the, the significance of this, of this flight. So please share with us, what has the experience been like in 48 hours? Have we been, have Nigerians embraced this, both home and Nigerians in the, in, in the diaspora? Normally when you start... Uh a new destination on your inaugural flight when coming back you may have a lot of people going in but when coming back you might fly empty yeah. on the first day you might fly less than 10 percent of the capacity of the aircraft but that's not the that wasn't the case here yeah. our flights already sold out into over a month coming coming into in fact sometimes we block seats we block sales so, Nigerians have embraced this. The Nigerians are happy. It's as if some kind of burden has been lifted on their shoulders. A situation where Nigerians were paying, my own staff paid, Toyin paid 15 million naira on business class for a six hour flight to the UK. Some, some people paid 17 million. Then, because some people couldn't pay, Nigerians were going to South Africa, fly six hours to South Africa, come from there over, fly Nigerian space to go to London. Another nine or ten hours just to get a cheaper fare. Nigerians were going to Morocco, Egypt, Qatar, eight hours to Qatar, lay over about three hours, you do another eight hours to the UK just to get something cheaper. Then if you want to fly uh, direct, it's a different ball game. The humongous fare is, uh, uh, was unbearable for them. When we came on stream, and this is why we say support your indigenous operators, they will do well. When we came, I, I don't know what I can save the country. The 15 million to 10 million, people will say clap for us. We know we brought it to where it belonged. We brought it down to 4 million naira. We are not losing by doing 4 million naira. That I can tell you. We brought it to 4 million naira, brought the other one, that's business class from 4 million, the other one from 1.2, and at the same time giving students rebate. So, immediately, the same airlines that we are giving dollars as an excuse for the fleecing of my country came down within 24 hours. Epis distorted the market, all of them started coming down within 24 hours, started begging people, doing social media, brands all over the place, and brought their affairs from 15, 17 million to 5 million. Now even begging people to come on. 
So Nigerians embraced abuse. Yesterday at the airport, airport so I met I met someone who told me, look, Alan, God will bless you. Look at my family of six. I had to cancel my flight with one of the direct carriers. With all the money they subtracted for my cancellation, I still made gain flying APIs. What I would have used in flying two members of my family, I'm using it to fly six members of the family. Thanks to you. That even now, if I want to go back to those carriers to fly, it has become far cheaper. So, Nigerians, when you say what has it been like? Okay. Right from the day we announced we we'll published our affairs. Even that you know, go fly got sold out within days. Got sold out within days. And even up to September. So the traffic is there. However, the last 48 hours has not been easy. First of all, you are told by Gatwick Airport to deposit uh, 3 million or 2 point something million pounds before you start. For goodness sake, those British, those British, where, where British Airways and Virgin are they paying that amount of money to Nigerian Airport as security deposit? And when you ask them, I say, okay, when are we going to get this money back? And they will tell you, no, until you stop flying to that week, until you stop, stop flying. So for the rest of your life, you put there. So we started negotiation, then they brought it down to some level. The fact is that all the ground handling, when they want to deal with you, they use everybody around you. The ground handling companies, you must pay this and that, a security deposit. Catering, 740,000 pounds, that's over 1.6 billion. A security deposit that they will keep forever. It's not as if they'll be drawing down from the money. I've never seen such a thing before, and they don't do it to other people. That's the truth. So the lesson is, in fact, on our inaugural flight out of London, we were given a particular place for, for check-in. For the past one month, we knew this would be our check-in. That was where the trainings were done, everything done. Now, a few days to, to, to the inaugural flight out of London, you changed it and gave us a place where the carousel was not working. On our first day, we left this country. We wanted to make sure we post 100%, not 90 On time departure, going to London and coming back. On the first day, out of Nigeria, with all the fanfare at the airport, we didn't delay our flight. We went right before time. And we arrived UK 20 minutes before, before time. But the check-in process was cumbersome. Because you have to, they put us in a place where you have to check in somebody, then carry the load manually to go and drop in another place. They made us pass through all this. The next thing, your body gets, they say, oh, the system um, has broken down, it's not working again. All those antics, all those antics. They don't use them, they use the gra uh, To me, they should allow us be. Yeah. That's the truth. But these are unspoken. Mm -hmm. These are unspoken. Mm -hmm. uh, you might expect more. Like, I even use your, your catering. Okay. So it's, it doesn't okay. end there, but it's been good. We are trying to roughen it out with, okay. uh, with, uh, it up with them. Okay. Good. The, the, the thing that is surprising you know, is that isn't there a mechanism in place to make sure that this kind of thing does not happen again? Yes, I, Nigerians can be very coy towards their own okay. compatriots. But if there's a system in place, then, you know, that system will make sure this does not happen again. After all, Festus Kiyamo, the Minister of Aviation, was at the uh, inauguration of the flight, and it was uh, pledging support when he was talking about reciprocity and all of that. And we're hoping that maybe the Nigerian authorities will also reciprocate with regard to this security deposit. Those are the kind of details they can work on to make sure that they provide necessary support. But he mentioned BASA. Kiyamo, when he was uh, talking, mentioned BASA. The UK has 21 slots coming into Nigeria per week. Now, British Airways alone does 14 into Nigeria. So how many slots do you have now to go into the UK? That's one. The second thing is the Aviation Roundtable is uh, proposing uh, what they call the Fly Nigeria Act, by which the Nigerian government, both at the national level and at the state levels, you know, will make sure that any government official that is flying at government expense travel with a Nigerian airline. Okay. What do you think of that proposal? Even if the individual is trying to the government is uh, paying. Yeah. Do you think we need that act? Mm -hmm. Fine. Let me uh, just a second digress. And, um, before I ask, ask me a question about uh, the support from the minister, the truth is that the minister is very supportive. And because he's very supportive, some are even accusing him of, uh, are you sure you don't have shares in APIS? 
So within the system, within the same aviation. So and that, they don't know that what APC is doing is starting for the entire industry because the sky is open for all of them. <coughs> if I, if APC does not get it right this time, it will be very difficult for any other Nigerian airline because we know what we have put in place. So the young minister is doing his bit. He went with us to the UK when they were giving us lots of two, two o'clock, three o'clock, four o'clock. You know, that kind of, he went to them and said, "Look, if you continue this, we will reciprocate in equal terms." He made it clear. So he has been out there. The trip he made to uh, France was to seek the collaboration of les Ors worldwide so that they could be leasing planes to on dry lease instead of wet lease to Nigerian um, airlines. When I see some write-ups, people say, oh, uh, Nigerian airlines, they are doing leads, uh, all this uh, Delta and the rest, they show capacity, they own their planes, they own nothing. All those legacy airlines all over the world, they don't own those planes. What they do is, they make order, say 100 planes, give the, specific the specification they want on those aircraft. Then, of course, a finance company comes in, this lessors, they pay for those planes, lease them to, to them, they will pay for a good number of years and return them. They'll be paying lease renter. That's what they do. Those airlines don't own those planes. Quote me, they don't own them. They belong to the results. They let them return it after some years. So in Nigeria, if you lease aircraft, they say, oh, you've committed crime, you've done this, you've done that. Give it to Nigerian Airlines. We own our planes. I own over 30 something planes and I have about 33 orders made, paid for, that on the line coming. So at the end of the day, peace will be owning over 60 aircraft. I don't think there's any airline in Africa, in fact, most part of the world, they don't own it themselves. They are financed. Why in Nigeria you expected to do this? That's why the capacity is not increasing the way it's been done abroad. And this is what Faisal Kayamo is trying to do. This president will praise Kayamo at the end of the day if he succeeds in getting that. Because ECA visited me. They said, Epis, we see what you're doing. You're very strong. We know country risk. Because of country risk. That's why they're not giving a dry list to Nigeria. Instead, they will do wet lease. Now, wet lease is very expensive. It's very, very expensive. But you have to do it. Because you don't have access to dry leads. You have to do this to support your operations. Like even in the London field, we are bringing North Atlantic to partner with us as backup, not as the main act. Because you want to be strong, what of one day, any of your three aircraft, anything happens to them. You don't want to disappoint anybody. And when you do such things, Nigerians will be criticizing this, this, that. They've forgotten that Virgin Atlantic and Delta are doing the same thing. France and KLM are doing the same thing. Air France, KLM. I mean, Air France, uh, KLM. KLM are doing the same thing. So, uh, and it's not for free. You pay for those things. There are other areas they use you too. Mm -hmm. So you pay for those things. It's not an arrangement where you go and bring somebody from behind the door to come and be running uh, international operations in your country. No, it's not the same so thing. So you have that wetlist with no... no yes, I have it as backup. Okay. As backup. So if you have any issues, you can key in through the other one. They can key in through us too. If there are any issues. Then about, uh, you talked about bus, uh, uh, Yeah, about slots. How many <laughs> slots do you have in Togadi? Yeah. We, in, under the principle of reciprocity bus. Uh, we, we are doing seven now daily flights into, into Gatwick. Nigeria, we have a balance of about 14 to do. We are ready. If the government gives us Abuja, London, I will do it. I will do it because we are expecting more aircraft into the country. Purchased by Airpiece. Purchased by Airpiece. We'll do it. If we get it, we'll do it. Like we are planning to hit uh, New York or Houston towards the end of the year. But we are bringing in more triple sevens. As I speak to you, my staff that are in California, my, the, the engineering technical services department, that in, in California now inspect, inspecting some three triple sevens we want to acquire, we want to buy. So if we could get them in the next two or three months, then of course we are good to go anyway. Right. We have six. Six of them. But what do you think of this uh, Fly Nigeria bill? Of course. Of course. In America, as an American public of, uh, uh, officer, you cannot, you would never, you are never allowed to fly any other airline except an American airline. You don't do that with public funds. If you're traveling on your own, it's a different thing. But if you're going for government business, you're traveling, it must be yours. So in this case, if there are Nigerian airlines going to certain destinations, you must be... They should be told to use those Nigerian airlines. Then, that will help to conserve our reserves. Yeah. Okay. Then the civil servants you talked about, you talked about civil servants frustrating operations. We are all Nigerians. These civil servants, have you seen them? 
Are you planning to see them and see them regularly? You know, in Nigerian fashion. <laughs> Because they, they will say this man has just uh, uh, launched a route to, to London uh, before our very eyes here, and he has not come to see us. I mean, uh, uh, this is Nigeria. Do you know Virgin Nigeria left here, or is it Virgin Atlantic? Yeah. One of the complaints yeah. was that uh, uh, yeah, you know, it was a difficult, yes, yeah. difficult to do business. And you are in Nigeria, you know the terrain. Mm -hmm. I mean, these civil servants, they also expect... No, they, they are not just uh, Urubu Mekuku and, uh, and yeah, the people who are you know, doing the I, I have said something the other time when you said uh, most lucrative route. Uh, it may not be, yeah, it may be most lucrative because they've been allowed to make it most lucrative. The costs are, are high also over there, but they've been allowed over time by shutting out indigenous operators and doing it on themselves and then catching all manner of uh, fares that make, make it very lucrative. But now that we've come in, it won't be as that lucrative because. Our return, fixed cost, is 372 million. Fixed costs of those planes flying out of Nigeria and coming back, fixed, not variable cost, is 372 million naira. Yes. On the triple, on the, yeah, 372 million. So if, uh, so you have to distribute this 372 million naira along the seats to be able to make sure you cover your cost. Uh -huh. So, now that uh, we've come in, it will not be as lucrative as it used to be. But APIS has done something for this government. President Tinubu was being bad-mouthed by some foreign interests, especially airlines, on the issue of uh, uh, this uh, trap funds. Sure not only trap funds, the exorbitant fares that we are charging Nigerians. They say, well, because your dollar, yeah, I mean, your naira has been devalued and your naira doesn't have value anymore, you must pay us in dollar or we you pay naira as humongous as they wanted. Each time a Nigerian was going to buy these tickets, they were bad mouthing our president. They say it was the president that cost it. Now, APIS came, the dollar was still the same 1,600 1, and something as at the time we brought down these fares. We brought it down. They followed immediately within 24 hours, brought it down to, uh, to 5 million. So, did the dollar change at that time? Never changed. So, they were actually demonizing our country for nothing. So, APIS has saved billions for this country. What? Billions of money that would have left this country. Billions of naira that this would have used to go into the market and buy dollars at any amount because they made so much gain. How do you cope with FX issues real quickly? Well, that is where we need government support. Just like Egypt did. Egypt, they were... They were they gave their airlines a window to get for it so easily. In our own case, we don't have it. We still have our own money trapped in the central bank. We still have our own money not being paid by Hajj one year after operating the Hajj. Meanwhile, the president has released this money. So central bank has not paid, yes. central bank has not paid you. Part, no, part of money they have not paid us our 14 million trapped that we made, you know, this bidding, forward bidding. Okay. You have my Naira borrowed at 26%. Now fidelity has changed it to about 30%. Borrow that money is there. You, dollar, you didn't get back. Naira, you've not gotten back. I'm in a joint airline well, trying to see what note, I can do. We need that money released to us. That note, Mr. Allen Oyema, I would like to thank you very much for joining us. Although I see you dodge my question Which about one? those civil servants, whether you will uh, see them. Well, <laughs> should, the civil servants should be told that what we are doing will help the politics. Yeah. It's not about Allen Oyema. Airpiece is no longer owned by Allen Oyema, it's owned by the over. 220 million Nigerians. It's not about me. Because if Alan Onyema and Epis, if you shut down today, I'll be releasing into the over 50,000 people. But, uh, but both direct and indirect yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, employment. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know who will be the next unrobber, the next kidnapper, the next suicide bomber. So it's for those civil servants to be patriotic yeah. Yeah. and to concentrate on their jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of so I'm happy you made some clarification because I started seeing some you know, narrative being pushed around that you have to partner with some local European airlines, sort of like a, you know, lease agreement to go in. So it is totally airpiece, totally our own indigenous crew, totally our food. I can see some very sumptuous Nigerian foods there, you know. Goat meat pepper soup. Goat meat pepper soup. Oh, this is, that's really lovely in disguise, Dr. Bati. I'm sure you would uh, <laughs> want to do that. So totally all of our, 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 our thing out there. Secondly, I'd like to ask, because I had a chance to fly the last airline that went in there, that was Medview. Mm -hmm. I've flown them to London a couple of times. And these are the same politics too they played with Medview that they started with you. My question will be, who are those who fight for you, Nigeria? I saw the Minister of Aviation there. Is he fighting 
you know, for air peace at Nigeria. Secondly, the governments of Atiga even called you to come and partner with them as regards their airline. When is Nigeria going to call you and say, this thing we're trying to do with Ethiopian airline that, 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 that we got burnt for? Why can't you take it off? Because you've shown capacity. As a local airline, you're going to Mumbai, you're going to Guangzhou, now you're going to London. You were talking about prospects of probably next year going to Frankfurt in Germany, Amsterdam, cover most parts of Europe, probably Paris, Charles de Gaulle. When will the government now say, this is our own, let us support him? Let him be the carrier for Nigeria. Well, uh, let me start from your last question. The truth is, yes, we need government support. All the Nigerian airlines, we all need government support. However, on the issue of uh, singling out APs to be the national carrier, we're not interested. Let Nigeria support the indigenous airlines. We are all flag carriers. APs is a flag carrier. Max Air is a flag carrier. Asman is a flag carrier. When you fly out of your country, you become a flag carrier. These, those ones do Jeddah, they do how they are flag carriers when they are doing such things. Why I say so is that in America, you don't have a national carrier. Uh, they have uh, Delta and others. They support them. Even British Airways and Virgin are not national carrier, but the British government supports them. If you touch Delta here, nobody, they will, I mean, the, America will bring its might to bear on you. If you touch a uh, Virgin Atlantic, Britain will do the same thing to you. I won't say it belongs to Richard Branson. Nobody says that. In our own country, one we are pleading. I like when you said support. Let him. The ease of doing business. Let them even do that for the indigenous airlines and see us blossom. Instead of bad mouthing these airlines that pass through all manner of problems, let me tell you what happened yesterday at the international airport. When our own aircraft landed, Thank God I was there. This thing had happened before. We reported to FAN. And let me excuse the leadership of FAN here. Mrs. Olubumi uh, Kuku is doing fantastically well. Himself and the director of air operations, uh, Ablahi, uh, Captain Ablahi Mahmoud, they are, doing, they are pained. They are pained with the wickedness in the system. Civil servants. The wickedness in the system is thinking. The, your only carrier doing international operations in Nigeria would land and you keep us somewhere in the bush. This used side of the airport and they expect us to be bussing passengers, bringing rickety buses to come and take international passengers to the new terminal. Where these foreign airlines rejected when they opened. It was APIS because it's my country that decided to go in there. They begged APIS to do that. We went in there. When they did the wrong way, they wanted to do wrong way analysis after the lighting. It was APIS, Nigeria Bank. They didn't have money to fuel a triple seven. A triple seven consumes about 8,800 liters of fuel. Bank. It was APIS they brought to come and test it. We even told them, let's use our smaller planes because of the cost. They said, no, it's a triple seven. They wouldn't. We did it free of charge. We, I, I don't want to enumerate things we've done for both the government and people of this country. Now, the new airport. You will pack us two kilometers away from the terminal. Then you expect us to be doing bus, whatever. That plane that landed yesterday, it would have taken about six hours for people to exit that airport. Because first of all, they put us near Nako Shed, very far. Nobody is using that end. No aircraft, not even foreign or local. Nothing there. That was where they told my pilot to park. Meanwhile, C-23 at the new terminal was open. Where you can just park the aircraft and the avion bridge will key in. And when my captain called, he said they reserved it for a foreign airline. That's a foreign really? Yes. Quote me. At the expense? At the expense of, of a Nigerian airline. A Nigerian airline? Yes, they did it before. They did it before. One of my captains, Captain Kali Sosifani, disobeyed them. And I wanted to punish him. I came out. And Olubi Mikuku and uh, his team, his management, criticized that. In fairness to her, they criticized that. Now, it happened again yesterday. Our aircraft from London was to be packed in one bush two kilometers or so, or one, kilo, one and a half kilometers to a uh, terminal. Full flight. Full flight. So imagine the time it would take to take people from that place to the terminal building. Imagine the time it would take to offload before it start going into the carousel that are not even working very perfectly okay. It would have been taken about nine hours. 
Nigerians would have hated APs because they would know. And that was the game. So you are contending not with external conspiracies. There are internal conspiracies within Nigeria. Some Nigerians are, they are praying that we fail. But the good thing is that nobody is God. And the good thing is that 90% of our countrymen and women are very happy. That's our consolation. But there are people out there, they are in the minority, so negligible. I don't even bother about them because they cannot scratch a piece. Whatever they write or whatever they do, they cannot scratch this airline. But it happened yesterday. And when the woman discovered it, she was livid with rage. I mean, the MD of fan. So, I, but look at what I did. I called my pressure control center who could reach the pilot because I couldn't connect with the pilot. I called my, my OCC. They, I told them, tell that pilot not to move that aircraft. Block that, wrong, block that taxiway. No airline in, in the world would have been able to pack yesterday. And that was what happened. British Airways landed. It, that was when they started making moves to tell us to go to where we really belonged. And remember, this woman had said on television, they had that, when she said that a place had been dedicated for APIs as the home airline. When you go to Britain, you have an entire Terminal 5 yeah. for BA. <coughs> but in my own country, some civil servants or some people didn't see. And the DG of the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority was on board my aircraft. About four senior staff of NCA were on board of that aircraft. And he had to go because they delayed the flight about 30 minutes. Standing in one place for 30 minutes. What kind of country is this? So when the DJ who was on board contacted the captain to know what is happening, and he, I think he went into the cockpit, and they called the people in tower, the airport control people. And the captain told the airport control that even the DG of NCA is on board this aircraft. And the guy said, and so what? That will show you some people's determination not to, they don't see beyond their noses. The, but that wickedness will not last. And one thing is that anybody that fights me or fights anything I'm interested in will have himself hurt and regret at the end of the day. So guys, air peace taking the UK route has lessened the stress of Nigerians. It has not only brought down the prices of flights from almost 20 million to 4 million. It has also made it so easy for many Nigerians who had to fly to the... the who had to fly to South Africa, to Ghana, and other parts of Africa for cheaper prices. Now they can just fly from Nigeria without going through that enormous stress. Honestly, Alan Oyema is changing, you know, is changing the narrative for the aviation sector in Nigeria. And we all know what that means for us, honestly. And that is why we keep telling Nigerians to take away this sentiment of tribe and all that. When are we going to start seeing ourselves as Nigerians? When are we going to see an outside man who is progressing and you really want him to progress? You see an Igbo man who is progressing and you want him to progress. When are we going to keep all this tribalistic kind of life that we live today so as to move Nigeria forward? So, guys, it was really great listening to this man and his challenges that he went through. Honestly, I've learned one lesson or the other. And I, I believe that you yourself, you must have learned one thing or the other from the story of Mr. Allen Oyema. And that is why we keep telling Nigerians, we all should come together and build that Nigeria of our dream where we all can be proud to be Nigerians because that is just what we should be looking forward to. So guys, I don't know what you have to say about this video. Has not just reduced the prices of flight ticket for Nigerians. It has also less the stress that Nigerians go through. It might shock you to know that some Nigerians go to places like South Africa, Ghana, and other African countries in search of cheaper prices of flight tickets. Most times, flight tickets in Nigeria can cost you almost 20 million naira flying to the UK, especially when you are taking the business cl class. But the emergence of air peace taking the UK route has brought down flight ticket prices to 4 million naira. I mean, just 4 million naira. That is from 18 million to 4 million. That equally led to other airlines trying to emulate air peace. And you know what? Recently, when air peace launched their UK route, other airlines had to crash 
their prices because airline because airpies because airpies brought their prices because airpies brought their uk price to 4 million naira other airlines who have been selling for almost 17 and 18 million getting to 20 million had to bring down their own prices to 5 million hey alen onyema really spoiled business for them so guys this is why we must patronize our own this is why we all should come together and say nigeria has to breed nigeria has to move forward you can imagine that airlines that do sell their tickets for almost getting to all, almost 20 million were forced to bring their prices down to 5 million. Nigerians, that is amazing. That is amazing. So guys, I don't know what you make of this video. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Please don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. Thank you.